If you want to learn how to do five snare rolls for your drum patterns in electronic music, or more specifically for side trance drums, this video is for you. We're going to go back to basics for episode three, and we're going to take a look at making five different snare rolls that you can add to your drum patterns to spice things up. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned for this video because we're going to look at five different ways and different style drum rolls that you can add to your loops. All right, what is up guys? You're watching Claritone Audio. For those of you that are new here, my name is Killian. Some of you guys might also know me as Nalik, which is my side trance project with Grasshopper Record. This is my YouTube channel where we go over all kinds of things about music production, audio engineering, sound design, uh, mixing, mastering, and more. So in this week's video, we're going back to basics. This is episode three of my back to basics series for side trance music production, which we review the fundamentals and the basic patterns and build up um, we're starting to build up a loop now. This is the third video. We went over hi-hat patterns, we did snare grooves. And in this week's video, I decided we're gonna do five different drum rolls or drum roll patterns that we can add to our loop. So we're gonna continue building onto that main loop that we've been using so far in the three videos. And we're gonna make five different snare roll patterns at the end of the bar or at the end of the loop. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stay tuned. We're gonna go over five really, really cool snare rolls that you can add. Um, before we get started, I just wanna mention Please check out the links down below. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, please uh, check out my Patreon links. There's a lot of cool offers and stuff you can get. You should also check out the Facebook group in the description down below. We're at like three and a half thousand members. Uh, it's a group all about Sidechance music production, a lot of other video producers that are just there posting their content and cool articles and questions. So definitely join that. Um, and without further ado, we're going to jump right into Cubase and check out these five different snare rolls. We're going to continue building onto that drum loop that we were using in the last three videos, or the last two episodes, I should say. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about what we're going to do next, which is continue building onto that loop to make the full drum loop, and then we'll do some drum processing. Um, so definitely you guys want to subscribe and like this video if you guys appreciate the content because that really helps me out. But if you guys are interested in seeing more of the back to basic stuff, please do subscribe because I'm going to start doing some regular content again and then I'll come back to doing some more back to basics episodes. So we're going to take a little break. All right. So it's a couple hours later. I just got a little bit busy, but uh, we're here in the Cubase project now and we're going to get started with pattern number one. What I've done is I've just imported a little snare sample from Sennheiser. Um, I kind of like to get a different snare. I said we might use the main snare, but I decided I'm just going to import a little snare like this. It's quite, um, quite a different sounding snare. It's one of those really like punchy sounding snares. We'll listen to it in solo and then we'll just start building the first pattern right away. So this is the snare sample that we're going to work with for the snare rolls. So I'm just cutting everything below 140 and that's about all I've got on the channel at the moment. Um, it was a little bit longer, not by much. I've just sliced it down, chopped it down to 1 16th. Actually, it won't really matter for the first four copies, so we'll leave that like that. And I'm starting it, uh, we're going to do a four bar snare roll uh, for this particular pattern. So obviously I have eight bars here, but you know, you wouldn't play it every eight bars. So that's just a note. So for the first bar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it play every beat. And then we're going to double that after on the next bar. So here's where I'm just going to trim them down to 16ths. So now what I'm doing is I'm doubling the timing, right? So we're filling it in. And I'm just duplicating this every bar. And filling in the blanks. So when you get to the last bar, you're going to have to switch your grid to 32nd note up at the top here so we can get into a shorter grid or a shorter uh, sample and then we'll fill in the grid again so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the volume of that snare because it was quite loud and now we'll just listen to this pattern like this and if we um, need to make some adjustments we'll we'll do that and then render it down So what I might do is just cut out the super fast part 
and keep it for only half of the last bar. Sure, why not? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight them all with my glue tool, which is uh, in Cubase, it's the shortcut number four. You just click number four up at the top. We're gonna click once to glue it all together. And now we've got a perfect four bar um, clip that we can move all at once here. So the next thing I'll do is I'll render it to audio here by just, um, you know, render in place, which I have assigned to a shortcut. So we'll render it in place. And the reason I rendered it in place is because I want to apply some volume automation. Um, and I just find it easier to put it all on the clip and do it with a fade out so that you don't have to worry about automation copying over or anything like that. So uh, I'll render it down. I'll just apply a fade out and I can apply my own custom curve if I want to. And that about wraps up pattern number one. We'll listen to it on some kick and bass so you can just get a feel for it. And just make sure the volume is proper right now. All right, so that should work. And let's listen to it in the loop. And we can play with our fade out shapes that we can make sure that that first one is audible. We can just make our own custom shape, something like this maybe. All right, that about wraps up pattern number one. Let's move on to pattern number two. Pattern number two, which is arguably the easiest pattern. It's just going to be straight 16th notes right from the start. And then we're going to add a filter uh, at the end of it. So this one's only going to be two bars long. We've got it uh, cut down to 16th note. What I did is I just muted the top one. I have the sample back again, just one copy. So I'm going to copy that over for two bars like that. And now after the EQ, I'm going to use something that I often use, which is a really simple plugin from X for Records. And it basically emulates the high pass, low pass filter on a DJM mixer. So you've got just really quick high pass, low pass, you've got a resonance and you've got a bit of drive. So I generally just use it for the high pass, low pass feature. Uh, really quick, lightweight filter that um, sounds really nice. I'm going to put the snare in solo and I'll turn automation on. So we're in write mode. Now anything I do in automation is going to get written onto our arrangement here, or onto our session. Um, nothing too fancy, just going to do a filter up and it should be basically in the off position by the time it reaches towards the end. So that's about all I'm looking for. Right now what I usually do is I'll just once it creates the automation lane, I'll just modify the, the points however I want. And now the end should be at about 50. Really, really simple. Really, really simple. Uh, that's all there is for pattern number two. Uh, this one's pretty much going to be the most common one that you'll use just for a little quick fill. Uh, you can also use a high pass or just a, a you know a different band on Pro Q3. So if we open Pro Q3 instead of using the DJM, we could do something like this and just automate this movement, and it will pretty much give us uh, the same result. Maybe sounding a little bit different depending on how you adjust the cue of the band. So that about wraps up pattern number two. Now let's start moving to pattern number three, where we're going to start using two copies of the same snare. And uh, yeah, number three is quite cool.
All right, I bounced that second snare roll down to audio again for later. Um, we're back to this default sample, just here, one copy of it. We're gonna make a second copy of this channel, but um, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna lay out 16th notes for four bars. And we'll glue them together and duplicate this channel here. Actually, before we duplicate it, what we're going to do is bounce it down to audio. So now I'm just going to copy it down and create a new audio track right below. And what I'm going to do with this second copy is I'm going to offset it in the 32nd note grid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add fade ins to both of these. Okay, yeah, so let's listen to how that sounds together. So we can play with the fade out lengths here, or you know, how long it takes to get in. And what you're gonna get is pretty much that, it's almost like you can't tell that it's getting faster until it's just double the speed. So it's a really, really cool effect. Right, so I really love pattern number three. Um, it involves two copies of the same snare. And once that's done, I guess you could just render it down by uh, putting them in solo and rendering out on the stereo output of your, of your project here. So let's move on to pattern number four, where we're gonna start to do a bit of pitching and stuff like that to create more interesting snare fills that are a little bit harder to use because of the pitching. They're a bit harder to place sometimes in the project, but um, we'll go through them and you'll see what you think. Pattern number four, we're gonna start using some pitch shifting. I'm gonna use the built-in pitch shifting in Cubase. It's just, uh, you know, the most simple one for me. You can use a pitch shifting, you know, plugin, or you can probably just use, you know, the one built into your DAW. Uh, we're gonna copy 16th notes for now for two bars. And again, we're going to have to glue it, render in place so that we can apply our pitch shift. So I'm going to control right click in Cubase and you go to processes and we can see I have a shortcut here. So if I go pitch shift, instead of doing in the transpose part of the pitch shift, we're going to apply a pitch envelope. The range is going to be 16 semitones and We're going to automate going upwards. We're going to use time correction and we'll do, sure, we'll try solo musical. So,
So at about that point, it got a bit annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a bit of a choppy feel by cutting some audio up, cutting uh, copies of it up at the end. Let's see how that turns out here. Okay, maybe not. What you can also do alternatively is I'll just kind of uh, so I'll just rebounce it here and I'll do kind of an alternate pattern number four here by changing the range from 16 to 12 we might get rid of those annoying notes here as well because that'll be one octave So by limiting the range of the pitch shift to 12, we don't have some of those super high range annoying uh, snares that we got at the end. But, um, you know, doing something cool like chopping them up or, you know, layering a drum fill, you know, you can even cut out that last section because the kick bass might stop for a whole bar or something. Um, you know, experiment, have fun. I just came up with that on the spot um, and they both sound pretty cool. So pattern number four is kind of a two for one. Hope you guys liked it. Let's go to pattern number five. All right, so we're on the last pattern. Pattern number five is going to be similar to pattern number four in the fact that we do pitch shifting. But instead of doing pitch shifting with time correction, we're actually going to remove the time correction and just let it get faster and faster and faster. So to do this, we're going to need a lot of extra length on our clip to, let's say we want a two bar final length. We're going to need to export a lot of extra bars because as we start to apply the pitch pitch up process and it gets faster and faster, the clip is also going to get shorter and shorter. So you'll see what I mean. Um, we're going to be copying little, so the grid is in six, uh, 30 seconds, so it's 16th notes here. I'm just going to copy maybe, I don't know. There's really no science behind this. You can experiment also because the longer length you give it and you know the more you shorten it, the crazier it's going to get uh, a little bit faster. So. You got to find kind of the, the sweet spot. Let's say I take that and now I'm going to export all of this so that it's part of one clip and I can start applying my pitch shifting to that one clip as a whole. So same thing, we're going to control right click, go to process and pitch shift. We're going to keep this, uh, actually we're going to go back to the 16th because I want uh, as large of a range as possible every time that I click apply on the process here. And this is a section that we're going to turn off. So this is what usually restretches the um, pitch shift samples that you keep the same timing and the same, you know, um, the same timing relative to your project's BPM. But in this case, if we turn it off, you're going to see what happens when we apply uh, the process. It's going to get shorter. And I'm going to keep doing this by just doing my shortcut and clicking apply again until I get to approximately two bars in length. So now if I were to do it again, what you're going to see is it's going to get less than two bars, which I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that. And what I usually do is I'll just go with my um, secondary tool here, which is sizing applies time search which means instead of cutting it off at the end, it's just going to time stretch it to wherever I drag it to. So I'll just squeeze it into the, the two bar window right there. Apply a quick little fade in and let's hear what this pattern number five sounds like. So as you can see, I kind of found the sweet spot luckily on the first shot. Um, 
if I were to continue have given like if I would have given it a lot more length and then applied the pitch shift at some point you just kind of get so close together that it gets like a, a solid pitch and it just kind of sounds like you know something different doesn't sound like a snare anymore it doesn't sound like a roll you just kind of get to that uh, ringing anyways so this is what pattern number five sounds like um, I really hope you guys like this last pattern let's listen to it in context with a bit of kick bass and then what we'll do is we'll just go over all of them again so you guys can get a little bit of a feel for them. So that was pattern number five. I hope you guys like it. We'll just do a round table and take a look at patterns one through five again. So here's pattern number one. All right, so that about wraps it up. That's all five patterns played back to you guys. And we've gone ahead and created a bunch of different cool grooves since episode one in the Back to Basics series. I'm really curious to hear which ones were your favorite patterns uh, throughout all three of the videos. I know a lot of you guys mentioned your favorite patterns in the hi-hat video and in the snare groove video. So give me a roundup which numbers out of one to five were your favorite in all three videos. I'll post a link to the previous videos somewhere up on top right now. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're gonna take a break from the Back to Basics series, maybe after this one or after the next one, once we build up the full drum loop and take a look at some basic processing. We'll go back to doing some sound design videos and we'll come back to future episodes of Back to Basics based off of what you guys are curious to learn. So let me know those down in the comments as well. Please, it'll really help the algorithm. And uh, subscribe if you guys like the video and learn some stuff and wanna stay in touch for those future videos. So. That about wraps up today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.